We also, starting this week, have the opportunity for in-person worship on Wednesday at 12 noon and Thursday at 10 a.m. For, for this service that we take for Sunday morning. So you'll be welcome to come and be a part of that. If you're coming to one of those services, please let us know. And I think that's it for the announcements. And we'll move forward with our first hymn, hymn number, our only hymn, hymn number 557, Blessed be the tie that binds. Let us sing. <laughs> Scripture lesson this morning comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. It's chapter 5, it's verses 6 through 17. Hear now the reading of God's holy word. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive good or evil according to what he has done in the body. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May God's blessing be upon us. And may God protect us from the enemy that is constantly at work trying to steal God's word from us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. It is good to be back as the body of believers. Huh? I say that knowing good, full good and well that we have been together in a, in a new way. Um, across the internet, across social media, through all those ways. But again, like I said earlier, um, this is Sunday morning now. Um, uh, and if you're at home watching, again, there's a whole group of people back at the church where you attend, um, a little over United Methodist Church, about 60 people sitting in the pews. And, and we're glad to see them. Again, as I preach you this morning, it's still Thursday morning, it's, it's kind of vacant, but I'm excited about that happening, about, about people being here, and, but I'm excited, I'm also a little bit nervous. Um, it's going to be worshiping in a new way. I'm, I'm nervous because um, we know that the pandemic is nowhere near over, that the, the, the numbers keep going up, especially around us. 
Um, but I am glad that we have taken the, the, the necessary precautions for to, to be out in public um, and that we are modeling some good behavior perhaps that other people will see us doing as Christians as a community and model that behavior out in the community. And a few weeks ago when I was putting together my sermon series and I came across this passage of scripture, I had already decided to work through a piece of 2 Corinthians. I said, what a perfect passage of scripture to come back to church on, to, to return to church. And, and I loved it because it said in there, so whether we are at home or away, whether we are at home or not at home. Now, again, I'm reading a lot into Paul's letter here. Um, the, the, the experts will tell you that that's not at all what he's talking about. What Paul is talking about is our home, um, that, that, that our true home is with God, and that we're away from our true home in our earthly bodies. It goes in deep, more deeply in um, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, talking about our, our, our home on, on, on this planet, and this place is a tent, and our heavenly home is established um, by God. But I, do, I like the phraseology because it reminds us that whether we are at home or not at home, in any of those places, we are called to have good courage. We are called to walk by faith, not by sight. And to know that we are a part of the body of believers, no matter where we are. If we're worshiping online or if we worship in person, we are the body of believers, at home or not at home. And again, this Sunday, June 14th, we have people who are saying, I finally get to go back to church, and I'm excited about that, but I hope that in the three months that have passed that we have not been in this building gathered together under a roof called the House of God, Little River United Methodist Church. I, I truly hope that we found ourselves at worship and together with God and with God's people in new ways. And perhaps we've learned something about that because whether we're at home or not at home, we are with God. Now, Paul, in writing this letter to, to the church at Corinth, was trying to, to clear up some misconceptions about what he had said and what people thought he had said and how people responded to what he had said and how he had responded to that. So there was some kind of rift between, between Paul and the church, and he was trying to clear some of that up. But in doing so, he was also trying to remind them that it wasn't about what he said or what they thought that was most important or what they said and what he thought that was most important. It's important for us to recognize in, 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 our, in today's culture, sometimes we think what we say is more important than anything, or the sources that we find are more important than anything, or that um, we can that, that my source is better than your source, and that what I have found to be true is more important than what you think is true. And, and again, we could all have these discussions about so many different things over the past few months and few weeks. If you're talking about a, 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 a virus called um, COVID-19, or you're talking about how we should respond to racism in, in our country, we've had these conversations. Probably some of those same kinds of conversations happened in Corinth. And Paul's reminding the church, if you're at home or not at home, what's important is your aim to please God. Are you aiming to please God in your conversations and in your, in your contact with one another? Is that your aim? Do you please God, whether you're at home or not at home? And I, that, was, that was last week. I'm, I'm sure some of you are asking out there. Some people have asked me in here, why is there a red pyramid up? Those, those, I, I appreciate when anybody notices there's something different with the pyramids because I consider myself to be pretty um, astute liturgically, and I like the colors and the times and the seasons, and I think it's important to, to, to follow them because it reminds us of who we are and where we are in a process. Um, and red is the color of Pentecost, and so Pentecost was two weeks ago, so it, it should be gone by now. Last week it was white because it was Trinity Sunday, and this week it's supposed to be green for the, for the ordinary time. But I want it red out here. Personally, I thought red was a better color for today. And so I went online to find out why, how I could get red to be the color of, uh, for the day. 
because my, in my training, I couldn't figure it out for myself. And what I have learned in, in, in Ted Hackett's class on, on literacy back in seminary 27 years ago, um, um, it, was, it, was, um, it, it wasn't gonna fit. So I went online and I started searching around and Googling Red at Pentecost, um, after Pentecost, when else can you use Red? And all the really good sources that I really trusted, that I really appreciated, that I used before, said you should only use it on Pentecost and about two or three other occasions. Maybe an ordination is a good one. Um, and none of them listed for what, what I want. So I, I didn't like those sources, so I went someplace else. And so I clicked on it and then I found it. And then I started to find, I don't know who it was, but it was on the internet, so I thought it was good enough because someone said this. And I said, oh, that makes sense. Homecoming, you can use red for homecoming. I never heard of it before, but somebody said it, so it must be true. Um, and so I said, we're gonna use red for homecoming. So we're coming home. And again, I, I, again I, my liturgical friends, if you're watching this, I'm sure you'll call me on it. But that's what I did. I went with this because it was red. It was homecoming. I wanted red, so I found a way to make it happen. I found a way to make it happen. Even when it's against my best judgment, I said, let's do this. Let's do this. Now, really a better way than just finding something on the internet and figuring it out and finding something that backs up my opinion of something would probably be to say, you know what? I really like red. We missed Pentecost Sunday. And I want to make sure that we recognize that the Pentecost is, is so important to the life of the church because it's where the Spirit came down upon us, gave us life, and gave us purpose to be who we were, were called to be. And knowing I was out of season didn't matter. I just wanted it here for a couple of weeks to be reminded that we are a Pentecost people. So there's two ways of going about it. Just saying, you know what? It's not really an opinion. I don't have to back it up. Or to say, you know what, I'm going to go find somebody who agrees with me to make this happen. In either of those cases, when we come to the decision to put up red at Pentecost or to, to come to church um, in the middle of a pandemic or to go shopping or to post something about how we feel about the current um, the struggles in our country over, over racism and how um, police work and, and all those things. And whatever we're doing, However we're doing that, it's really more important for us not to try to find a place for someone who agrees with me to back it up. The question we should be asking as the church of Corinth would have put before them, are you doing what pleases God? Are you making it your aim to please God in all that you do, in your worship, in your interactions, in your protest, in your counter-protest, in how you respond in the midst of, again, a virus that is um, infecting people and killing people at what I would call an alarming rate, is what I'm doing, if I'm home or not at home, pleasing to God. Paul put that question before the church of Corinth, and I believe he puts it to us today. I'm glad we're gathered together. I'm glad we're finding ways to come back together as God's people in the midst of, 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 of brokenness and pain, both emotionally and mentally, and brokenness and pain physically. And I'm glad we're finding ways to do that. But I pray that as we move forward, that we will do all we can to make sure that what we are doing is pleasing to God and to God alone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith led us now to pray. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>
we discuss and talk about um, our tithes and our offerings. Uh, even on Sunday mornings now, we're not going to be passing the plate and, and bringing it forward and receiving it um, um, so as to um, do what we can not to pass too many of those germs around. Um, um, again, you're at home watching this, but on Sunday morning, there'll be boxes at the doors to drop your offering in. Um, and, um, but still, we will recognize um, those offerings and, and, um, and, and pray for those offerings, um, pray over them. Um, again, you can give by going to lrumc.net um, and going to the online giving button. You can send it to P.O. Box 160, Little River, South Carolina, 29566. And if you need to, you can drop it off at the church um, during the week. We appreciate it. Again, your continued support of the ministry and mission of Little River United Methodist Church at home, down the street, around the corner, and around the world. Um, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this and every opportunity that we have to return our thanks unto you. We pray, Lord, that these, our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings will be acceptable unto you. In Christ's name we pray.
Holy One, who breathes life into each of us and allows for each to continue to breathe deeply of your presence. We are thankful to again be back in your presence, in the presence of one another. Lord, we give abundant thanks for your wisdom, for your guidance, for your love for us that has sustained and has given us the hope and the peace that does surpass all understanding in these days. And Lord, as we engage together again, we continue to ask that you would work among us, that you would help us to have eyes that we would see one another, whether here physically together or whether apart in the community as your children, that you would give us boldness to go and be your church in ways that are pleasing to you for it is you that we worship. It is you that we look to model our lives after. And so, Lord, as Christ models for us, we continue to try and be your people, loving you first, but also loving everyone you have created before ourselves. Help us to stay and always to remember our priority is to love you and to love others. Lead us and guide us as you have continued to lead and guide throughout these days, and just as you did when you taught your disciples to pray the prayer together we lift up today, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And once again, I, I remind you that um, 10 a.m. kids worship um, at um, our um, uh, children's um, Facebook page and uh, the children's sermon can also be found on our multiple platforms and again starting this week, June, the week of June 14th, if you'd like to attend in-person worship um, and you don't really want to be here on Sunday because you think the crowds are too big, um, there's the option to come Wednesday at 12 noon uh, for our midweek service that will be also still online or to come for the um, the Thursday taping of the Sunday traditional service. Um, again, you can show up. It'd be helpful if you follow the most know you're coming, um, but there should be plenty of room and social distancing and masks available and all of those things. We've got this. Look at that. I think we're right on top. Doing all right. Again, families on um, last um, Sunday with us is next Sunday, June 21st. That may be another reason you'll want to come. Um, Wednesday or Thursday to catch her live one more time um, and, um, and the next Sunday. So, so please do that. And, and she, she played um, um, a, a piece that I, I've always enjoyed, but I've, always, I've really enjoyed her playing of that piece, um, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Um, and um, when I hear that as, as time goes forward, I'm sure I will think of Tammy's playing on that. So thank you very much um, for that. And so. Um, um, that will, I'll, I'll, I lifted a piece of that song for my benediction because it was, it was just touching my heart as she played. Um, I invite you to raise your hands um, to receive the benediction as I raise my hand to offer the benediction. O Lord, here I raise mine Ebenezer. Hither by thy help I come, and I hope that by thy good pleasure, safely to arrive at home. Go now in peace. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all God's people say, Amen. We are finished, we just aren't able to turn it off.